Okay, so here we go. Top five. So I gotta admit that at first I wasn't going to include this character, and the reason why is that I think that the jerk with the heart of gold trope is horrendously abused in fiction. But then I realized that most of the time this character doesn't even have a heart of gold. In fact, the most generous thing I can say about him in that regard is that at least he isn't a psychopathic killer. Sander Clegane is one of the most violent and brutal characters in the entire series, but the thing is he never makes excuses or apologizes for it. It's really refreshing to see a character be so extremely self-aware when it comes to his love of killing, fully admitting that he isn't a good person, but he's quick to point out that there are men far worse than him as well. In fact, the only thing that he has an all in common with the trope is that he shares the cynicism that usually comes with it. He's disgusted that people like his brother are given knighthoods. He just grabbed his brother by the scruff of his neck and shoved his face into the burning coals. He hates the hypocrisy of a system that claims to give titles of respect to those that are chivalrous, kind, and protectors of the innocent, but in reality gives them to those that are best at fighting, killing, and sometimes just because the people of power that bestow them feel like giving it to them. He actually points out a pretty big flaw in the system, and I think it really is an apt metaphor that he also hates fire, something that is often a representation of chaos and cruelty. He gave up on all the political BS in the Seven Kingdoms a long time ago, and now he just adheres to his own moral code. It's funny because if Sansa is the optimistic child that believes in fairy tales and happy endings and is only now beginning to wake up to the fact that they aren't true, then the Hound is the one that already went through that process and is now being pushed to the other extreme of not believing that there's any good in the world. They're both people that need to find the balance between realizing that life isn't a fantasy where everything goes your way, but at the same time it's not a place full of morally reprehensible people either. It's a tightrope walk, and not an easy one. Also, as a side note, I know a lot of people like to make them into a Beauty and the Beast type of romantic pairing, but personally I could care less if there's a romance there or not. The importance of their scenes together was seeing a girl come face to face with a knight who maybe didn't look like the ones described in songs, but was still honest and just in his own way. And seeing a man who spent his entire adult life hating everyone around him go back vicariously through Sansa to a time in his youth before his traumatic experience, when he himself still believed in happy endings. I don't think that two people bringing something that powerful out on each other necessarily has to be instigated by or result in romantic feelings. Tragically, I don't really see his psychological problem being rectified at this point, and I see him dying bitter, angry, and alone somewhere far more likely than him coming back with a redemption story. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he will fulfill some sort of personal justice before the end. And you know what? I kinda hope he does. 